bless you, everybody. Um, welcome to um, our service this morning in the Builders Impact Ministries. Um, we hope that you are ready to receive a word from God. There is a word from, from God to, to this morning for you. Amen. We will be back in about uh, five or ten minutes. Listen to the songs. Amen. Just get your minds focused in worship. And we'll be right back with you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Master. 
God bless you, everybody. Amen. What a day. Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad therein. Um, we welcome everybody in Jesus' name. Um, hopefully, you're not having any technical difficulties there. I, I think there was some technical difficulties I heard going on, but they are sorting that out in the background. If you are on the uh, Kingdom Builder site, <laughs> They may switch you over to Pastor Ken's site, so or vice versa. So just if if, if uh, one happens to go out, just jump over to the next, okay? <clears throat> it's not that um we're uh, it's on purpose, but it's we're just trying to sort things out. Um, we have a few few cameras going right now, and they're just trying to sort things out. Technology, amen. <laughs> Sometimes it's a challenge, amen. But if you can hear, I tell you what, tell me this. Um, do us a favor, and I don't do this all the time. If you can hear us and see us, um, why don't you just type it and say, I can hear you. Amen? Just type it in. That way you can help the technicians that are in the background sort things out. So just kind of type and say, I can hear you. Whichever one you're on, just, just type, I can hear you. And um, and they'll make sure things are um, working fine. We're going to get the volumes up on the monitors, rather on the, the, the tablets and the cameras. We're going to get those volumes up. And we, so I want you to hear clearly this morning. So just, just kind of a little exercise. Amen. Just type, I can hear you. Just type, I can hear you. Amen. Just like you can hear God. Type, just type and say, I can hear you. Amen. I can hear you. That's all. Amen. So we, we, we most certainly thank God for his goodness. Turn the up. We most certainly thank God for his goodness, his mercies, and his kindness. We, we do have... Um, we have, um, I got some help this morning, some more help, I should say. <laughs> Amen. Um, you know, I just want to let you know that God is still in control and he's still on the throne room. He's still in control. Um, before I go into anything, I want to just say good morning to, amen, our KBIM family. We love you. Amen. Amen. Love you, love you too. Amen. We love you. And um, amen. I want to say uh, good morning and God bless you to all those who are joining in. Amen. Just keep joining in. Those who are joining in, <clears throat> we know that uh, some are um, looking for this type of fellowship this morning online. And um, whether you stop in for a brief moment until you get to um, uh, your your church service, and, and I know some may, because I would do the same thing too as well. Um, God bless you in Jesus' name. And um, whether you tuned in for the duration, I promise you that God will not disappoint you. He's a God that never fails. He always have a message for his people. There is always a message for his people. God is always speaking. And uh, sometimes God just speaks in, in a whisper. One writer said, I looked for him in the mountains. He wasn't there. I looked for him in the fire. He wasn't there. I looked for him in the earthquake. He wasn't there. But all the time, God has really been there. He's in the fire. He's in the earthquake. He's, he's always been there. It's just that there is a, a still voice that God has. And uh, we have to learn to listen to his still voice. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, the, the, the prophet said, I, I heard him in a whisper. Amen. And sometimes God turned you in a little whisper. He, he just, just, just a whisper. Amen. And I, I think because of everything has slowed down, um, everyone is locked in at least. We're, I guess we're about to open up very soon, but I wonder if you can hear, still hear God's voice in a whisper from all this noise and everything that's going on. Amen. Uh, listen to the, tune in to the voice of God. Amen. I, I hope and trust and hope that um, everyone here in Connecticut, amen, uh, and, and all over, amen, have followed some of the principles um, that has set forth. Amen. I hope you have your mask. I have mine right here. Amen. I, I walk with it now and I um, have some extras going on. Amen. Um, uh, our sister um, Esther Richardson, she's going to be creating, uh, you know, some wonderful masks as well. Amen. We thank God for her um, giving myself and my wife, a few others, some masks, but there's some more coming. Amen. In Jesus name. But I, I hope y'all doing well. Amen. And um, I hope family time is really nice, uh, uh, you know, all together, amen, because the, the Lord wants us to, you know, get together and be together as one, amen? Even he, the Lord, is one. And we thank him. We thank God for being so good to us, 
that it doesn't matter whether or not we are we are uh, uh, locked in, not in the church building, but the church is always in a building somewhere. Amen. That's one thing about God, Jesus Christ, that when he rose again, amen, he multiplied. He multiplied because now that he's inside of us, the church is mobile. So the church is always in a building somewhere. Somewhere, the church is always in a building. The church is in your building, your house, meaning, amen, wherever you go, you are the church. We are the church. Wherever you go, don't you know that the church rides in a car? The church rides on a school bus. And the church rides on a city bus. Amen. The church walks down the street. The church greets their neighbor. So the church is always, the church is in government. Amen. The church is in the schoolyard. The church is all over. So when Jesus rose again from the grave and ascended back down and sent his Holy Spirit, oh my God, the church multiplied. So we are the church, and the church can never be hindered, never be stopped. Might be delayed, but will never be denied. We are the church, and no matter what happens, no matter how many buildings may close, we are still the church. In Jesus' name, we are still the church. Amen. Hallelujah. You ought to just type that right now. I am the church. Hallelujah. I am the church. Amen. We come to you one more time with a word from the Lord and... You know, I, I was, I was uh, Pastor Lisa sent her greetings as well. She's in the background working out the technical stuff. Thank God for, amen. I have another pastor friend of ours in our midst, our assistant pastor, Ken Roy. He decided to pop in this morning. But uh, don't, don't, don't be afraid. We got masks, amen. And uh, we got some gloves somewhere around. So, so we are protecting ourselves and we are staying, you know, the six feet distance from me. Amen. Well, my wife isn't here right now. She's about 50 feet away. So, but nevertheless, we are, we are making sure that we do this thing right. Amen. Um, so this morning, we do have a word uh, for you. Um, we, we thank God for that. I, I, was, I was basically um, trying to, trying to um, see what to preach on this morning, what to speak on this morning. And, and, um, and you know, I was caught in between, in between two. I was really caught in between two. And um, I was trying to think of what should I preach? Because I was really caught in between two. I mean, I was getting like these two messages from God. Amen. Been on this 40 days fast, and I hope you're fasting too as well. Amen. And, and I want to welcome you to fast with us and with, amen, those um, pastors and other churches in Bridgeport and around the region. We started a 40-day fast about... Um, uh, last Sunday, the 19th, and we're going to end on the 29th of May. And um, I hope you're able to join us in fasting. Fast, you can fast the entire 40 days, or you can fast one day um, a week. Just, just say I commit Monday, or I commit Tuesday or Wednesday, um, one day a week until we get out of this. And then it's 40 days, and I'm believing God that by the time these 40 days are up, that we're out of this. Amen. We believe in God for that. Um, so, so we've been fasting and praying, amen. And, and so, um, I've just been hearing from God and, um, I, I, it was just a couple messages that I came up with that I heard from God and I'm trying to decide on which one, Lord, it's, it, which one? And, uh, not just two, but there are others that the Lord speaks. He's always speaking. I was like, Lord, it came down to these two or three, I should say. And I said, Lord, which one? And, uh, I even tapped my wife and ran to her and said, honey, um, I have these three thoughts and, uh, that I, I know that the Lord is saying. And I, and I said to her, I said, you know, behind door number one is this one. Door number two is this. Door number three. And, um, and uh, she picked what was behind door number one and three and said, well, those door number one and three sound pretty good. Not just sound good, but she said she would, she would love to hear it. And now I have to go off and pick now which one because I can't speak two messages and then I'll talk until tomorrow if I have to do that. I'll do that anyways. I can. Uh, I just love speaking. Um, but nevertheless, I decided on the Lord. I said, Lord, um, this is the one that I'm going to approach. I want to, I want to um, encourage the people of God this morning. Amen. I want to encourage you this morning. Amen. And um, I want to, you to turn to your Bibles. Amen. We're going to go to our Bibles. Amen. Are you ready for the word? Amen. Get your family members. Uh, uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies, amen, to tune in because we are on, 
in Jesus' name. Tune in because the word is on. Amen. So I want you to get your Bibles um, in Jesus' name, and we're going to move on. If you if you have anything to say during the, the course of, of this broadcast, amen, you can type it. All you all been, love your comments. Amen. In the past week, I've been able to go back and see some of them. God bless you all so much for your encouragement. I want you to know that in these times, um, as you encourage, you are an encouragement to me. And not only to me, but you are an encouragement. I'm trying not to rush through this because I really want to speak from my heart. You are an encouragement to me, um, encouragement to one another, of course. And I want you to know that you are encouragement. If you're online right now watching us and you have another ministry, you want to be an encouragement to your pastor as well in, in these times. Um, this is what we're called to do as pastors. All of us have been called to do something. But from a pastor's likeness, this is what I'm called to really do. I, I love doing this. Um, I, I This is my true calling. Amen. I do other things. I, I work, full-time job. Amen. And but, but this is what I love doing the most. Amen. And so um, thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for the, the sidebar text messages. Thank you for your encouragement. It really means a whole lot uh, to me, to Pastor Lisa, and, and all of us here in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's get our Bibles out, and we're going to move on. Amen. And we're going to declare the Word of God. This is what we always do. Amen. The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Amen. We thank God for the Word. Come on, let's repeat after me, or you may already know. It said, this is my Bible, life roadmap. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can. At this moment, I will be taught the living word of God. I boldly confess that my mind is alert and my heart is receptive. I am ready to receive a word that will impact and transform my life to live right, to talk right, to think right, and to do right. Therefore, I will leave this place. Stay right where you are a transformed person. My life will never be the same in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen in the airways right now. Amen. God bless you all so much in Jesus' name. I want you to turn to, amen, 2 Corinthians. Amen. It says chapter 4, but it's uh, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, rather 24 through 31. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 24 to 31. That's where we're going to come from this morning. Amen. Uh, Lord is still speaking. It's just still speaking. Amen. Here to encourage you uh, this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I believe you have it in your Bibles and, and whatever uh, tools or instrument that you may have. Uh, the, the, the Bible reads, amen. The Bible, it's a powerful word. Powerful, powerful. Amen. It reads as thus from the Jews. Now, let me, before I, let me back up just a little bit. I'm still rushing here. I, I want you to know, like Paul, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians, he's, he's um, encouraging the people of God. He starts by encouraging them and uh, to the churches of Corinth that he had founded originally, he found a church in Corinth. And he's actually um, encouraging them it meant to stay strong in the Lord, among many other things that he encouraged them, meant, encouraged them concerning. But there were some false prophets that were running around that were telling lies, speaking lies regarding Paul and whether or not he's real or whether or not he's fake and, and so on. You read it, amen, just read from chapter one, you'll, feel, you'll find out. And so Paul wanted to really reconfirm, amen, his 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 commitment to God. He wanted to reconfirm. And sometimes people look for us, amen, to, to make a statement as to who we are. And sometimes people may not, uh, may pass judgment against us, a judgment against you as a believer in Christ. Amen. But sometimes we do have to let the world know, amen, by the evidence that we are Christians, that if, if I were to be convicted of anything, I'll be convicted of, regarding my salvation. Amen. So Paul picked it up in the middle of the letter and he characterized these things. So we're going to start from the middle from where Paul picked it up regarding who he is. He, he said this. 
Since you've been complaining about who I am and whether or not I'm a true Christian or a true believer, he said, listen to this. From the Jews, five times I have received stripes. He said, uh, I, re I, I received 40 stripes from the minus one. He said, three times I was beaten with rods. He said, let me prove this to you. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. He's, he's always traveling. He said, day and night I've been, I've been traveling among dangerous waters, in dangers of robbers and thieves, in dangers of um, his own countrymen. He said, in dangers of the Gentiles. Wow. In danger in the city, in danger in the wilderness, in danger in the sea, in danger among false brethren. Preach, Paul. He, he's really telling them, telling them that, listen, if you think I'm not a Christian, well, here's, here are some of the things that I went through as a believer. He said in verse 27, he says, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness, often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting, he, he hungered, amen, he fast, amen, and he said, in the cold and nakedness, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern is for all the churches. So Paul is saying, the fact that all these things that have come upon him, he said the most important thing is his concern for the churches, his concern for the Christians, for the de believers, the, his concern. Paul would never concern about all what he has gone through or going through. His concern is that the church is healthy and the church is well. So I think Paul has really proven out everything Paul uh, continued to say, if you back up just a few chapters, in chapter 4 of, of 2 Corinthians, he said, Paul encouraged the believers again, and here's what Paul said. He said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, but not distressed. We are persecuted, but not in despair. We, my God, we are persecuted, brother, but not shaken. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Cast down, but not destroyed. What? My God. Well, imagine that letter that comes to you to say, listen, whatever your name is, we, are, we, are, we might be persecuted, we might be per perplexed, but we're not forsaken. We're not destroyed. And that we have this treasure. Do you know what that treasure is? Hold on, we'll tell you what that treasure is. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. My God. That the excellency and the power of God is not of us. We're going to talk about that treasure this morning as well. I, I, I just want to summarize. I want to summarize what we're saying in one word today. What we're about to talk about. I want to summarize it in one word. The one central point I believe that Paul is trying to say in these verses, especially in, in chapter 4 of Corinthians, that we are troubled, we are perplexed, we are persecuted, we are cast down, and we can go on and on and on and on. But on the upswing of that, Paul presents a victorious testimony. He said, not in despair not forsaken, not destroyed. He said, no matter what, in other words, no matter what the enemy does to us, no matter what we go through in life, he said, there's a flip side to it as well, to say that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loves us. No matter what he says we go through, there is an upside to it. Paul says in another place, he said, when I'm weak, I am strong. Hallelujah. Because Paul is sending a message of hope. But there is one word that I could think of that characterizes what Paul is saying, amen, to the church. And I want to encourage you on this morning with that one word. He, Paul was basically saying to the church, he said, all these things that took place that happened to us, Paul was basically saying, we are survivors. 
He was saying, we are survivors. Somebody ought to say, I am a survivor. If I had the church this morning, I would just say, repeat after me, I am a survivor. Paul was saying to the church in, in, in 2 Corinthians or in the Corinth church, he said, all these things, he said, shipwrecked, cast down, beaten, and many of us have suffered traverse situations in our lives. Paul wrapped it up and he summarized it. And Paul says, we are survivors. And speaking about survivors, I just want to show you, since I uh, love, like, love statistics, I want to show you something since we are all survivors. We, you know, I was looking up the stats regarding the coronavirus, COVID-19. And I, I looked at when we started some four weeks back, five weeks back, how the numbers were so low in the 200s of thousands, 200,000, a little bit over that. And I said, I said, my God, look from where we came from. And as I began to look at the numbers, um, in our own state, I'm from the state of Connecticut, so in my own state, there's over 24,000 that's been confirmed. All right, just confirmed. That simply means that there are others out there that's unconfirmed. There are others out there, so that those numbers are much more. In the U United States, there are almost a million. And I believe by the time we get done with service today, uh, by tomorrow, there's gonna be about a million that's confirmed. And, then in worldwide, we're dealing with over two million. And I began to look at the, the death, the column where the deaths, and I began to look at it, 1,800 in my own state, uh, 53,000 um, in the United States thus far, and then over 200,000 around the entire world. Amen. You might be from another country what, tuning in right now. I'm quite sure your country as well um, is experiencing the same thing that we are on certain levels. But there was a column that in particular interested me. And I looked at it and I was, a, I was kind of surprised that it's there. And I'll tell you why. I looked at the recovered column. And I said, wow, there are 102,000 who recovered in, in America and in, in the world. They listed at 18, uh, eight, 800 plus thousand. And I'm not, not sure how many in my state or your state or your country that they, they listed as recovered. As I began to look at it right there, I know those numbers are a whole lot more. And I began to focus in on it. And I said to myself, I said, those aren't recovered, folks. I said, I want to change that. And, I, and I, I was going to change it somehow, but I just didn't have the time. The Lord said, those aren't folks that are recovered. Yes, they're recovered. But God said, those are survivors. Those who they have listed as recovered, those are people who survived. And likewise, you are a survivor. You may not have had this issue, but you are a survivor. And that's the column that we need, that the, the, the world need not to talk so much more about those that's been uh, 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 you know, had the virus and, and, and the many deaths, and we need to know, but they need to stress those who have recovered, those who have survived this tragedy. There are survivors out there. You have survived. It may not be uh, COVID-19, but you have survived some things. And if, if your, your testimony was, were to be told, you would definitely explain and articulate what you have been, what you have survived from. We're all survivors, one way or another. So that's what I'm going to speak from and encourage you this morning to let you know that you are a survivor. I bring this word of encouragement to you all this morning. We're all enemies and haters. We all have rather, we all have en enemies and haters. And we all have people who dislikes us. Not everybody likes us, amen, or loves you, amen. We all have enemies. We all experience haters. Um, we all have people who are envious, amen. We all have those who hate to see you coming and love to see you go. So we, we all have people who are not so much favorable of us at all. However, 
those aren't really your true enemy. The enemy and the haters we should be most concerned about and keep our eyes on is Satan himself. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rules of darkness of this world. It's, it's not the, the enemy that we uh, uh, should be more concerned about. Yes, I know people have done things to us. Yes, I know things have been said to us. And, uh, but the enemy that we should be most concerned about is Satan himself. The Bible warns us about him. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour in 1 Peter it warns us about him. He's a, he's a thief. Jesus said he's a thief and a robber. The, amen? The, the, he, he, he's a father of lies. He's fierce. He's cruel. Deceitful. And many other things that we can use to describe what he is. But don't mistake him. Don't play with the enemy. Don't play with Satan because he's not here to help. He's here to destroy the thief comes to steal and to destroy, Jesus says, but I've come that you might have life and that more abundantly. The enemy comes, the Satan comes, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, not to give life. He wants to destroy us because why? Every time he sees us, it reminds him of God. Every time, listen, every time Satan sees us, he sees God because we are created in the image of God. Let us make man in our own image. So every time he sees us, he sees God, it reminds him. Every time he hears the saints sing a song, worship, put their hand up, and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, it reminds him of the place that he fell from. And so he hates, it's like a person who knew they were, they were to do better, if they had done better, they would have gotten that position at work, and they see you in that position, and they hate to see you coming, and love to see you going. Satan will use any method necessary to take advantage of us, and get under, and, and try to get us under his control, because that's what he's trying to do. If you just bear with me, we're, we're, we have a word for you. He's trying to get a hold of us. He's trying to take control and try to get, get control of the whole world. You see, he could not control heaven. He tried to control the narrative in heaven. And he could not control it because of his pride. And now he decides, well, I'm going to control the earth. I'm going to go down and I'm going to inflict those people. I'm going to control the earth. He got booted out of heaven, and so the only place he has left to try to control is the earth. And so that's why the, 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 the problems that we've been having, and that's why the trials and the, and the tests and all the, the sicknesses and all the diseases and all the wars and, and everything that we've been going on, that, that we've been experiencing. But the Bible says one day we would be caught up out of all of this. One day the Lord is going to come back, and he is going to... I'll rapture his people. He is going to transform his people. The dead will get up. Those that are living, the Bible says, they will be caught up to meet him in the air. The, the enemy knows that. He doesn't know what time or when it's going to happen. But one day, could happen right now, while I'm here speaking to you. But one day, it's going to happen where we'll be gone from this earth and, 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 and a new earth, a new heaven is going to be created. The Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul he warns us not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. He said, do not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Otherwise, he will take advantage of us. Don't be ignorant of what the enemy does and what he can do. Because he will take advantage. He does not play by the rules. He does not play by the rules. While we're trying our best to play by the rules, Satan does not play by the rules. In, in, in speaking about the rules, in boxing, there are rules. I used to watch boxing. 
Don't watch it anymore, but I used to when I had some time. I used to watch boxing, but in boxing, there are some rules. Uh, rules such as, you cannot hit below the belt. You can't hold, kick the person, or headbutt the person, or bite the individual. Too late for Mike Tyson. It, 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 you can't bite the person, Mike Tyson. And, and uh, you cannot punch an opponent or your opponent, your opponent in the back. Or, 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 or kick them in the back. You cannot hold your opponent and hit him at the same time. Amen? So you're holding on to your opponent, hitting him at the same You can't do that in boxing. If, if, you, if you score a knockdown, it says, of your opponent, you must go to the farthest neutral corner. I'm going somewhere with this. You must go to the farthest neutral corner while the referee... Count the, the, your opponent out. Amen. And, and so there are rules that governs boxing. The devil don't care about rules. There are rules that governs the earth. There are, are guidelines that are set in place. The devil could care less about that. He doesn't care about rules. His aim is, is to knock us down. His aim is to headbutt you. Hits you below the belt. He violates the rule. His aim is to bite your ears off. Mm, uh, somebody got that. His, his aim is to kick you while you're down. His aim is not to have a neutral corner. He doesn't have a neutral corner. The devil is not neutral at all. He sees, he will see you suffering. And he's the type of individual that will kick you while you're down. He will see you. He will take advantage of you. And he will make sure that you don't get back up again. And that's his aim. That you don't get back up again. Soon as he received permission from God regarding Job, the same received this permission from God because he was upset that Job was all uh, protected. The Bible says there was an edge around Job. He's protected. And so the Lord took the protection down. You know why? Because he trusts Job. And Satan said, all right, Job only worship you because of stuff. And the Lord said, well, I'll make a deal with you. I'm going to take this protection from around, around Job. I'm going to drop the protection from around the seven continents. I'm going to drop the protection from around this world, and I'm going to open it up to you to see what I'm just saying. God is, it, it, God is always protecting his people, but he wants to show the enemy that my people are not worshiping me because of some car. They're not worshiping me because of the house. They're not worshiping me because of the job. They're not worshiping me because of jewelry, because of money. But they're worshiping me because of who I am. He wants to show the enemy Hallelujah. that I'm not, our, my people who are called by my name is not worshiping me. Hallelujah. Because of these things. And it is so important that we do not worship and praise God and call ourselves coming into the house of the Lord just because we get things. Hallelujah. If those things were to be taken away, will you still worship God? If those things were to be taken away, will you still trust him? If God was to take a hedge from around us, we don't know. You, We don't have a clue how much God protect us and have an edge around us. But I wonder if that edge was to be taken from around us, will we still trust God? And it's so important, vital, that we are not, uh, our, our relationship with God, it is not contingent upon stuff. Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never fail. It is the word of God that we shall stand on. Because his word will never fail. Things will break. Cars will break. Houses will fall down. Jobs will be lost. Companies will go down. Hallelujah. Monies will run out. Hallelujah. Gold will run out. Oil will run out. But God never run out of a word. 
His word stands tall. His word stands firm. That's why we're standing on the promises of his word, the promises of God, because we know that we can trust him. His word is solid as a rock. And so Job had lost everything. God allowed the enemy to come and take everything, or allowed Satan to come and take everything from Job. And when Satan saw that Job was down and weeping, just imagine everything that Job worked all his life for, all his livestock, everything they ever owned. And not only that, to make matters worse, his children were gone. And when Satan saw that Job was down, Satan thought that it was over. And if that wasn't bad enough, he said, Hey, God, what's up with that brother Job there? Mm. I done took everything. Hallelujah. What's up with those people? I done took everything from them. I sent this, this virus came on the earth, and they're still praising you. I've been taking everything from them over thousands of years, and they're still praising you. And here comes the virus, and they're still holding on. But when Satan saw that, he said, well, let's inflict Job's body. The world is being inflicted right now. Hallelujah. And you may not be inflicted by this thing, but many thousands, millions of people have been inflicted by this virus, this Hallelujah. thing. Glory to God. But little did Satan know. Jesus. Hallelujah. He didn't know who he was dealing with. Jesus. Jesus. Little did he know Hallelujah. that Job was not praising and worshiping God and serving God because of his children. He loved his children. He was not worshiping God because of his friends. He loved his friends. He was not worshiping God because of the things that God has given him. But Job was worshiping God because of relationship with him. Little did Satan know that he was dealing with a survivor. Hallelujah. You see, survivors don't give up easily. If Job was not a survivor, he would have given it all up as soon as his livestock were taken away, Job would have given up. As soon as his children were killed, he was, would have given it up. But Job was a survivor. Satan thought he had him, but he had no clue what he was and who he was dealing with. Job was a survivor. Survivors don't give up easily. Survivors may fall today, but they will look towards getting up tomorrow. Survivors, they may lose the battle today, but they know it's not over until God says so. Survivors know that, that God has their back. Survivors, they always look, hallelujah, they always look towards the hills from where come their help, knowing that their help comes from God who made heaven and earth. Survivors know that the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to their God. And if it belongs to God, it belongs to us. Survivors know that no weapons that formed against them shall prosper. So you may take the house. You may take the stuff. You may take the, my kids. You may take everything that I own. But you can't take this joy. You can't take this relationship from us. You can't take it from us. Because we are survivors. We serve a heavenly father that watches over us. Though we may fail, he continues giving us second and third and fourth chances after chances. Jesus. And it's not that we are um, uh, misusing his grace. Uh, shall we continue in sin uh -huh. that grace may abound? Yes. God forbid. Yes. We will not take advantage of his grace just because we know that God is a forgiven God and he's a merciful God. We're not taking advantage of that. We, we, we know that God is gracious and is all sufficient. Mm -hmm. And we know that God will always, matter of fact, he said, come boldly to the throne of grace and there you'll find mercy. And, and so we're not, we're just because God gives us a second, third, and fourth chance doesn't necessarily mean we can run up there and do anything we, we want to do and come crawling back. It's not meant for that. It, it, it is good to know that it, it does not matter how many times we get knocked down. 
So long as we get back up again, that's the most important part. We know that God is a God of second chances and fifth chances. As a matter of fact, I'm on the thousand chances with God. None of us is exempt. I can't tell you how many chances I've gotten from the Lord. It's countless. We may not have uh, our, our, our full balance and composure when we pop back up again. But we must get back up another day and fight. Survivors do not stay down. It doesn't matter if you're in your house. It doesn't matter what's going on right now. Survivors, God, my God. So God is looking for a survivor. Hallelujah. To stand up in these times. Yes. He, he's saying, don't wait until the battle is over. Yes. Hallelujah. But he said, you are a survivor right now. Don't wait until things get better. He said, you can praise him right now and begin to thank God right now even though you don't see it we believe it that God is doing a good thing one of the survivors just bless the Lord right hallelujah, now hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> glory to God we are a survivor yes, we're survivors hallelujah. before we're survivors my God God has made us survivors before we became survivors yes. because in Christ we are winners in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. When the Lord Jesus came inside of us, we became uh, survivors already. So we're just acting out who we really are, my Jesus. We're just acting out who God created us to be, survivors. Hallelujah. They take a licking and they keep on ticking. Survivors will stand the test of time. We may have gotten uh, our backs against the walls, but we are survivors. Now, sometimes we may not get back up after we lost some things, but we know that we serve a God who has a supply above supplies. We know we serve a God who will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So don't worry about the stuff. And I know we've heard this if you've been a, a believer, a Christian for the past many years, you've heard it before, that God will take care of us. Hallelujah. And yes, he will. Yes. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, Hallelujah. nor his seed beg bread. Hallelujah. We're not beggars. We are survivors. Yes. We're not beggars. We're worshipers. Yes. We're not be My God, we don't have to rely on anybody else but God. And it's God with trust in God we trust when we have hope in Jesus we know that falling isn't the end we know that when we fail that's not the end we know that when we didn't get it all together it's not and I want to talk to somebody this morning out there right now it's not the end the enemy may tell you that the, 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 he's at already at the 10th count but I want you to know that this is not the end this it's not the end. There's more life left inside of you because we're holding on to hope in Christ Jesus. This is not the end. Let me tell you something. This climate of pandemic has cr created this atmosphere. And I want you to know that hope has not been defeated. Hope will never be defeated. Hallelujah. I, let me say it again. Hope will never de be defeated. No matter how much people try to walk away, hope will not be defeated. Just because somebody walked away, just because somebody gave up, doesn't necessarily mean that hope has been defeated. The song rings out in my head, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. And all other ground is sinking sand. Hope is not defeated. When he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh may I then in him be found. In him my righteousness alone. Faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ. The solid rock I stand, and all other ground is sinking sand. Hope is not defeated. Hope is not sinking sand. Hope 
has not gone away. Hope has not been destroyed. Hope is still standing. And the fact that hope is still here. Oh my God, we are all survivors through him that love us. I have hope in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hope in nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I'm standing on the promises of Jesus Christ, my King, because in him Hallelujah. I have hope. Hope is still standing tall. I may fail. I may fall. But I have an anchor in Jesus. And my anchor is holding. In hope, my Jesus, my anchor, our anchor is in Jesus Christ the King. And I'm holding on yeah. to his arm. Uh, let me say it again. Our anchor is not in the stuff, my God, but my anchor. Have you ever seen an anchor? Have you ever seen this big, great ship with one anchor that is holding the ship from moving? My anchor holds my Jesus. Jesus is my anchor. That's who I hold on to. That's who I depend on. My anchor is in Christ Jesus. So though we may fall, we can rise again because we are survivors. We are survivors. Uh, David says uh, in Psalms 24 and 16, he said, just a, a, right, a just man may fall seven times and rises again, but the wicked shall fall in mischief. The, the, the righteous will fall, but they'll get back up again. The righteous will always get back up again. God is always giving the, the righteous a second chance. But David also saying, he said, those that are, are not in Christ Jesus... It will only take one thing to subdue them. So those, us who are believers, one thing should not destroy us. That test is not going to destroy you. That, that, that trial is not going to destroy you. That challenge that you're having in, in your life is not going to dis destroy you. He said the world will be destroyed by one thing because they don't have hope. Not the hope that we have as believers. They don't have that level and depth of hope. But he's saying that one thing will subdue an unbeliever. My God. But the believer will go through many things. Think about how much, how many things have you gone through? Think about even in this year, in 2020, how much you have already challenges that came that you have suffered through. Challenges in your mind, challenges in your heart, those challenges that challenges at home that you have gone through. And think about 2019, those challenges that you've gone through. Think about 2018, if you can think back that far and look back and, and, and see how far God has brought you from. All these many things that came upon you, that came upon us, it could have destroyed us, but God. Hallelujah. It could have subdued us, but God. It could have destroyed my family, but God. It could have put me in a six-foot grave, but God. My God, that sickness could have destroyed and take you out, but you're still standing, and you got a but God testimony. You got a but God hope that I'm still standing. Might be wobbling a little bit. Might be might still be taking some medication. Might still be limping a little bit, but you live on. But you limp on because you still have hope in Jesus Christ. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and His righteousness. It could have taken us out, but it didn't take us out. Because if that's where our hope is in. And I know some of y'all, or most of you, heard our testimony, myself and my wife's testimony, and there are others out there. Because while so many are perishing because of this COVID-19, many are being inflicted and afflicted by this COVID-19. It visited my home. And somebody may say, well, the Bible says no weapons formed against you shall prosper. Well, guess what? It didn't say it wouldn't form. It said no weapons that's formed. So
So that simply means some things are going to come against you. I'm going to get to it testimony in a while. Some things are going to come against the church. But Jesus says through the mouth of Paul that no weapons formed against you shall prosper. Through the, the mouth of the word, brother. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Anything that comes against you, it will not work. Why? Because you're a survivor. Now, this weapon came against myself and my wife for about 21 days. And I know they say 14 days, and you have the symptoms, and you should be out of it. I will tell you right now. My God, protect yourselves, y'all. Not that we weren't protecting ourselves. But this thing came upon us, and it dragged on for 21 days. And during that time frame, at first we didn't know what was on us. We just felt kind of ill. My wife said to me, um, I feel a little headache. And it feels like a migraine, but it's not a migraine. I was feeling the same, but I didn't say anything to her. A couple days later, she said, I still feel this headache. And I said to her, you know what? I've been feeling the same headache for uh, a couple days now. I just didn't mention it because, you know. And so we found out that we began to experience other things. Temperature began to rise up some. Thank God, not to the point where it knocked us out. And our bodies began to go through some stuff. It felt as if something got injected inside our bodies. As if we actually drank something and it contaminated us. And as we weathered through this thing, we determined, we made up in our minds that we will persevere on. Oh yes, you saw us here, see us here every Sunday and we have not missed a beat. Every Sunday, bringing the word of God, bringing the word of encouragement to the people of God and to the world. We've been here, but y'all, our body's been suffering. And, and it, it, it's not that we're ignorant concerning the things, is that we're fighters. And fighters will always keep getting back up again. We're survivors. And we kept pushing and pushing. Now, if it had gotten to the place where we couldn't do it anymore, by all means, we would have let everybody know, be aware. But what I'm getting to is that the very fact that something has come upon you doesn't necessarily mean that you have to bow to it. We refuse to bow, my Jesus, to this thing that came in our bodies. And I'm not saying that those who didn't, uh, who succumbed by it, that they bow to it. It's just that their bodies just wasn't strong in, enough. But we made up in our minds that we're going to fight through this. We made up in our minds that we're going to push through this. We made up in our minds that we're going to keep on praying. We made up in our minds that we're going to keep on praying our songs. Even if we didn't have enough strength to sing the songs, we're going to keep praying. We're going to keep worshiping. We're going to keep trusting God. And I'm standing right here after 21 days to let you know that our bodies been healed by the mercies and by the grace of God. That is no goodness of our own, but it's by the grace of God. To see so many that's around us that have fallen away. It could have been another testimony. It could have been another song. It could have been another, another uh, individual on the news. We could have been one of those numbers. But glory be to God. We are survivors. And I want the whole world to know. And I want the devil to know that you may take all our stuff. You may attack our bodies. But you're messing with a survivor. You're messing with a fighter. Is there a fighter out there that something's been messing with you? That sickness been messing with you? That stuff been come upon you and coming upon your family and attacking your family? You ought to be bold enough, oh my God, to let the devil know that you may attack me. You may attack my family. But you're messing with a survivor. Haven't you learned from Job? Job, haven't you learned from Joseph? Haven't you learned from David that survivors will stand up to their giants? That survivors don't stay in the pit forever. That survivors will face their lions. That survivors will go into a hot fiery furnace. That's because survivors know that they're not there alone, but Jesus Christ, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords is with us. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. We are survivors. Oh, you want to open your mouth, type it, whatever you got to do, and say, I am a survivor. I survive it. Hallelujah. I survive through the storm. I survive through the wind. And you're going to survive through this pandemic as well. I'm speaking to somebody. I don't know if you're somebody in your bed right now. Sick with it. In your home. Sick with it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, give them strength right now. You are a survivor. Every pain you feel because of that sickness. Before, because of the virus. Open your mouth every day and say, I am a survivor. Tell COVID-19, you're messing with a survivor. You're messing with a fighter. You're messing with, uh, my, my Jesus, you're messing with a child of God. Because I am a survivor. I'm a survivor. I see God just, I see just, if you look at the side, I don't know if you can see it. If you look at the picture, you will see that there's a light going across the entire globe. My God. <clears throat> if you just focus on it, if you can see it, there is a there's a survivors that's sitting on top of the globe. That there's a beam coming out. And I just begin to see the glory of God covering the entire planet covering the entire uh, seven continents i just see the glow of god is about to cover the entire planet my god because the survivors uh, are speaking out the survivors are rising up god is beginning to hear the survivors pray the prayer of a survivor the worship of a survivor he's beginning to hear the sound of the survivors coming off the earth coming off the globe and God is about to do something exponential in the atmosphere because his survivors are calling out. His survivors are calling out. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions, Jesus. but God is a deliverer. He'll deliver us from all the afflictions because there are many. But he said, it doesn't matter how many they are. He said, I will deliver you from all of them. My God, do you trust God as a deliverer? He said, many are your afflictions. They, they were afflicted in Egypt, but God sent his man servant in and delivered them from everything that was happening. God is a deliverer. Our afflictions present God with an opportunity to show up and deliver his people. Let me say it again. Our afflictions presents an opportunity Hallelujah. for the Lord. Jesus. Jesus, my God, I am sensing it. I'm feeling it in this building here. The afflictions that we have gone through and affliction that you're going through right now it is creating an opportunity Hallelujah. for the creator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To show himself strong yes. in his people. Yes. It's my God, opportunities are being created. Yes. So don't look at what you're going through, my God, as just an affliction. It's creating an opportunity. My sickness is creating an opportunity. When I was, uh, I was down with asthma and asthma had inflicted my body, it created an opportunity for God to heal me. And I'm here, I'm standing here to let you know that I'm healed from the asthma. I don't care what the doctors may say. I don't care what anybody else may say. They say it lives with you forever. But when God heals you, he heals you. When God delivers you, he delivered you. And in the name of Jesus, my God, God, who supplied all my needs has healed my body because there's an opportunity Jesus. the Lord will deliver you Jesus. on your sick bed Hallelujah. the Lord is a deliverer Hallelujah. the Lord will deliver you with your weakened body Hallelujah. the Lord is a deliverer distraught the Lord is a deliverer anxiety and hopelessness setting the Lord is a deliverer I just stop by here to give your word from God to let you know
You are a survivor. And he's calling for his survivors to stand up and, my God, and not stay down. He's calling for his survivors to rise and proclaim the name of the Lord to say, I am one of them. I am one of them. I am a survivor. They have not heard your testimony just yet, but you are a survivor. I have not, they have not heard it all yet. Paul told his testimony how he was shipwrecked. Oh, how he was beaten three times. How his, his very countrymen came against him. How the enemies came after him. Paul told his testimony. And that's the testimony of a survivor. What is your testimony? My God, what is your survival testimony? You got to understand that God always shows up. God will always show up in our weakest moments. Every time we're not down, God always shows up. He always shows up. When Paul was sick, he went and prayed to the Lord three times. Jesus. And God sent a word to Paul. And he sent a word. He said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Whatever God gives us is sufficient. Whatever he put in your hands is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for this world. Is grace sufficient for this, this beat up that our body, some of our bodies are taking because of this COVID-19? I implore you to get back up because the fight is not over. The fight is not finished. The fight is not over. Survivors know that the fight isn't over. It's not the end. Because guess what? God is in it. It's only the beginning. And God gives us more beginnings after beginnings. It's not over. But I want to encourage you today that it's not over. We're about to open up. God is about to open things up. But just one more push from his survivors. One more push from us. One more prayer from us. And one more song from us while we're in our homes. He needs to hear from his survivors. You are a survivor. I'm speaking this morning to the church out there and, and to those who, are, who have survived. You are fighters and you are survivors. Somebody thought that you would have been gone by now. But you are a survivor. Survivors don't run away. Survivors hang around. Somebody thought you would have thrown your hands up by now. But you're still here. Why? Because you are a survivor. Somebody thought you would have just hanged the hat up, that you would have just quit. But survivors aren't quitters. Survivors are fighters. And my God, we're in this to win. We are winners. We are survivors. You may not know or look at yourself as being a fighter or being a survivor, but just because you got up this morning and tuned into this broadcast, God wanted to confirm to you right now and to all of us that you are a survivor because you're still here. You're still holding on. You're still standing. Even though you've gone through the turmoils of life, uh, you've gone through many things, but fighters are many, many fighters are battle tested. Your presence tells us that you are a survivor. You're not going to go down without a fight. I'm not going to go down without a fight. And even though, though life throws you or threw you unexpected blows and not you clear off your feet, there is enough strength inside of you to get back up again. There's enough inside of you to rise again. An unex unexpected thing happened. And sometimes surprises come. When we least expect it. And we thought this is the big one. That would take us down. But I'm here as a testimony before you. That is not going to take you out. 
If you have to crawl back, then crawl back. You may have to limp your way back, then limp your way back. You may be lost for words, or you may lost your wages. You may lost your job. You may have lost friends and family because you kept holding on to the bloodstained banner, but you keep praying. Survivors, grab a hold of your worship. Survivors, grab a hold of another song. Grab a hold of another prayer. Grab a hold of hope. Survivors, I call for the survivors to grab a hold of another dream. Grab a hold of the vision and grab a hold of the word. I'm calling for the survivors to stand up. The world needs to know that we're still surviving. That the church world, that the Christian world, that the believer in Christ Jesus, we're not going down without a fight. We're fighters. Hallelujah. And we're survivors. Oh, Lord God, I'm so excited about being a survivor. You've been training for such a time as this. I'm about to close, but you've been training for such a time as this. Let me say it again. You have been training for such a time as this. Why? Because all the prayers that you prayed is paying off. All the years, my God, all the years you thought God wasn't responding to your prayers. The Bible says, God told Cornelius that your prayers that you've been praying, it, it stands as, as a memorial before me. In other words, God told C Cornelius in the Bible, he said, your prayers, my God, I remember them. I do not forget the prayers. So you, you, my God, you stood this test of time. You've been training all these years. Jesus. That's why we compel people to pray. That's why we compel to come to prayer. That, that's why we compel them to turn to the Lord in prayer. Because you're building it up. It's storing up. You are on training ground. All the years, you've fasted. It's paying off. Because now, you need it. Now, it's coming to strengthen our bodies. I was talking to my wife and I said, don't you know that all this fasting that we've been doing over the years, these 40-day fasting, I said, is it possible that some, somehow it played a role into how our bodies responded to this COVID-19. Is it possible? I want you to know that all these things that you've been doing over the years, God was training you. All the many times that you should have let go, God is training you. God was training you and it's paying off in these times. Why? And how do I know it's paying off? Because you're still here? Because you didn't let this pandemic crush you and defeat you. They told us all to go home. But all of us went home to our God. My God. We didn't let it crush us. Why? My God. Some went home to worry and anxiety. Some went home to other things. But let me tell you something. We have not gone home to fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. We didn't run home to fear. Neither did we go home to anxiety. We ran home to pray. Yes. We ran home and did some more fasting. We ran home, my God, and said, God, what's next? My God, are, are you waiting? Are you ready for what God has next for you? Are, you? are you ready for what God has in store for you? Because your eyes have not seen and our ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for you. The survivors, our eyes haven't seen and our ears haven't heard what God has in store for the survivors. We may lose some battle, lost some round, but if you know it, we're still standing. We are still here. They may have rung the bell, but my God, somebody is getting up again. Somebody is rising up 
again. Somebody is saying, I'm not going to lose this one. I'm not going to lose this battle. Are you determined that you will not lose this battle? I will not lose this battle. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Will you fight? Will you fight? Come on, open your mouth and say, I'm going to fight. Uh, uh, go ahead, type it. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight this one. Because you're not fighting by yourself. God is fighting with you. Because you're battle tested. Victory comes according to how equipped the fighter is. How well the fighter has been battle tested. Victory comes from how well the fighter has been trained and the fighter has been tested. I want you to know that you've been trained. You've been tested. Been through the trials. Been through the things of life. But all these years, my God, all these years, we were being battle tested, y'all. God was testing us for such a time as this. He was preparing. Oh, Lord Jesus. Remember the songs. Remember the, the hope you had. Remember you showed up when we were coming to the church building. Remember you showed up dragging in. Remember you showed up and thought it was all over? But you kept coming? Remember? Let me just remind you. Remember when you really didn't feel like it? But you kept persevering. You came into the house of God when it was here, when we were meeting together in the a, in a houses, in the church houses. You came to the house of God and you, your body didn't feel like it. Your spirit felt like it, but your body didn't. And you didn't feel like moving on, but you kept persevering. You were being battle tested. You were being battle tested because the very things that should have destroyed you the very things that destroyed others, it did not destroy you. May have lost a battle. May have lost some rounds. But my God, you are a survivor. He's in the ring with a survivor. My God, sickness is in the ring with a survivor. You are a survivor. And when you go before God, God is going to look at you and say, you good and faithful servant, you. Enter in, survivor. Because we all are survivors. I don't know about you, but I want to hear him say, well, good, uh, the good and faithful servant. Enter in because you stuck with it. You are a survivor. We may have been knocked down, but we're not knocked out. The steps of a good man are ordered by God and God is ordering your footsteps yes. he's ordering your footsteps anybody out there feel like there are survivors that I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to this one you know that you're gonna make it you refuse to give in we refuse to give in in these times we gotta fight through this y'all Congress is fighting the government is at odds at each other but the church of the living God, it's time for all of us to mobilize together. As Nehemiah mobilized the people together, when they saw the desolation of the wall, he mobilized the people together. And he put tools in their hands and said, we're going to rebuild this wall. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to rebuild this thing back up. I want you to know that God don't want us to start from where we left off, but he wants us to start from scratch. Are you ready to start from scratch? Meaning that are you ready to do a, for God to do a reset on you? Are you ready for him to make some adjustments in your life? Are you ready? 
this mind has to be transformed first. Because if this mind isn't transformed, you can dress this body up. You can put on the best of clothing. You can put the person in the best of place. You can set them in the White House. You can set them in a mansion. But if this mind is not transformed, then change would not be received. There's a restart, a reset, not a resume. Survivors, they don't, they don't care about resuming. All they know is God, whatever you say. Listen, there are many untold stories out there. Stories that need to be told. Will you tell your survival story? Somebody needs to hear your survival story. Many have seen the glory and the glamour of who you are. Look at you. Look like you have it all together. Seems like nothing ever plagued you or bothered you. But little do they know that behind that smile is a powerful testimony. That behind that sickness is a powerful testimony. That you have a testimony that have not been told. That God is going to see to it that your testimony is told because you are a survivor. You are a survivor. I am a survivor. Are you surviving? I'm surviving. I'm going to survive this. You're going to survive this. We all are winners. Come on, open your mouth and declare with me and say, I am a survivor. Hallelujah. Let the world know that I am a survivor. Let the troubles know that I am a survivor. Let pain and poverty and fear know that I am. We are survivors and we're going to make it through this. We're going to make it out of this. Tell that virus, tell that evil that I am a survivor. Somebody may have it in their bodies right now. Oh, but I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you to write it on a paper. I dare you to type it out. I dare you to let the world know that I am a survivor. Survivors are optimistic. Survivors see the glass half full. I am a survivor. They rise in the morning with hope and go to bed at night with a vision. That's a survivor. They live an excited life. That's a survivor. We're all survivors. We're all survivors. We're all survivors. You are a survivor. And I want you to be encouraged today that after all of this is said and done, after all the, your troubles is said and done, You're still here. You're still standing. I, want, I, I just want to encourage you this morning. That's why I brought to you uh, the next message you'll hear next week. But I wanted to encourage you this morning. Because some of you are at home thinking that it's over. There's an individual who owns a company, who owns a job, a, a business rather are saying it's over. You have all your hope in the business. And this thing has shut it down. But it has not shut down your life. It has not shut down your God. It has not shut down hope. And I want to encourage you this morning that it is not over. What shall we say these things if God be for us? It's more than the world against us. 
We are all survivors. We are more than conquerors to him that love us. Paul says, and I'm about to close, Paul says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, sword, a virus? He said, and as it is written, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Paul said, no, no, no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate me from the love of God, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall hinder us or separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. This thing will not be the end of us, but God is creating a beginning. God is creating a new beginning just like the earth was flooded and God created a new beginning. Somebody saw the rainbow out the other day and they were beginning to thank God for hope. But I want you to know that there is a rainbow across this poor earth. Once again, if you turn your attention to the picture again, if you can see it, there's a rainbow over the earth. It's a light of hope. It's a light that depicts that we are all survivors. We have the treasure, Paul said, in earthling vessels. And this treasure that I'm speaking about, Paul spoke about, is Christ Jesus inside of us. We are these earthling vessels. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Christ, the hope of glory, is inside of us. Nothing will hinder this treasure from doing what it has to do. This treasure that's inside of us is going to brightly shine outside of us. What's in us, it's going to come out. And if Christ is in us, if God is in these earthling treasures, then the power of God is about to be unveiled inside of us and it's about to manifest itself. This house might be destroyed, but the treasure that we have inside of us can never be destroyed. Bow your heads wherever you are as we pray in Jesus' name. You are a survivor. I am a survivor. We are all survivors. He will deliver you in the sixth trouble. But he said, in the seventh trouble, he said, there shall no evil fall and come nigh your presence. A so Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Lord God, for delivering us, for transforming us, for taking us through these times. God, for coming by one more time to let us know, God, that we are all survivors, Lord. That, Father, you have created this time for us. You've been training us. You've been wooing us. You've been building us. You've been protecting us. You've been guiding us. You've been shielding us. You've been healing us. God, you've been directing our pathways. You've been speaking to us. You've been our guide. You've been our shield. You've been our buckler. You've been our strength. You've been our hope. You've been our joy. You've been our peace. You've been, Lord God, our all in all. You've been our healer. You've been our Jehovah Rophi. You've been our Jehovah Shammah. You've been our banner. 
And God, we just want to tell you, thank you for being there for us. For putting us through the training. We want to tell you, thank you for delivering us through the trials. We want to say thank you. We didn't see it, God, the end of it when we were going through it. But now you're telling us uh, that we're survivors as to why we're able to stand right now. And oh, God, having done all to stand, we will stand, God, and we will not give in. God, there's somebody that needs your strength right now that was on the brink, Lord, of giving up, of throwing in a towel. But today, God, you confirmed with them that God, they're survivors. They're winners. They are fighters. In the name of Jesus, put a fight back into that person right now. Put a fight back into that brother right now. Put a fight back into that sister right now. Put a fight back into that home right now. Put a fight back into that young person right now. Put a fight back into the young people. Put a fight back in the name of Jesus. God, and let the world know that you have survivors. That you have survivors and they're not going to give up. God, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. God, we know that after this, we're going to sing and shout the victory. We know that after this, God, we're going to come out much stronger, much wiser, much better, so much better. We thank you for the chains that has been broken off of our lives. We thank you for the power that's in the name of Jesus. Power in the blood of Jesus that the chains have been broken off our lives, off our homes, off our families, off our church in the name of Jesus. Lord, give hope to the hopeless. Give strength to those who are weak. And God, strengthen those. And Lord God, let the weak say, I'm strong in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for doing it now. We thank you for making a way out of no way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. In Jesus' name. God bless you all today. Thank you for tuning in another time with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your prayers for one another. And thank you for your prayers that's been sending this way. Amen. Our bodies are strong physically. I want you to know that through our testimonies. I want you to know that not just us, we are survivors, but you too is a survivor. You too is a survivor. Hold on to God's unchanging hands. Hold on to his way. Hold on to what he's going to do. Let me tell you something. The power in the blood of Jesus will never run out. It's able to break every chain in our lives. God bless you all so much. Amen. Continue. Thank you all so much for giving to the ministry. For sowing a seed. Thank you all. We, we love you all. We thank you all for supporting what we do here in the name of Jesus to our, our KBIM family. Thank you all for continuing to support us in many ways. Amen. Through your giving. Amen. If you don't know, you can give through our text to give. You can give any amount by dialing 203-307-1122. So you can text, amen, any given to us, any amounts, amen. 203-307-1122. Uh, we will just ask you for a few information and then you can give that direction. Also, you can go online and our online given is www.kbimnow. Dot org and just click on the donate button. Also, if you have Venmo or Cash App, our Venmo car letters are Kingdom hyphen builders hyphen two one nine Kingdom hyphen builders or builder rather hyphen two one nine and through Cash App KBIM now 
Amen. And of course, you can always mail it to our church address. We're at 219 James Street in the city of Bridgeport, 06604. Amen. We want to say God bless you to those who are. Amen. I know there's some that are in from Jamaica that are listening in right now. Amen. And some other places. God bless you all so much. Amen. We love you. Amen. If you need to get a hold of us, you can inbox us. Amen. Or you can call us through the number that is listed on our site. God bless you all so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy the day and enjoy yourself, your family rather. Amen. We love you. Amen. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.